Senator Napolitano. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Secretary Burdick, I reiterate the invitation for you to visit the 31st District in California again. But as you know, the Los Angeles is preparing for the 20, 2028 Olympics, representing the ninth time our nation has hosted the world's greatest sporting event. DOT is aware of the scale and scope of games to be hosted by Southern California in 2028. What steps are you taking or do you envision taking to make sure the mobility plan for the athletes, officials, and fans, fans is fully supported by DOT, sir? Uh, we're enthusiastic, of course, about the Olympics coming to the United States. I've met with uh, LA28 leaders and uh, uh, leaders from the region. Uh, we want to make sure that we're teaming up well with uh, uh, the Olympic Committee and uh, the, the uh, city, ev everybody who's involved. Uh, because, of course, one of the most complex dimensions of running the Olympic Games is getting people to where they need to be. Uh, they have an ambitious vision for making uh, new transit or newly borrowed transit vehicles from around the country available. We're working with them on that through our Federal Transit Administration and welcome opportunities to work with Congress, too, to make sure the right resources are in place. Wonderful. I know that uh, the last time the Olympics were hosted in LA, they talked about night-type driving and delivery trucks. I'm sorry? Night-type driving, the delivery trucks. Yes. Yes, we want to make sure that uh, uh, that's available as well, and uh, we think the partnerships with uh, uh, with our department and the technical assistance, including experience gain, uh, gained from prior iterations, is going to be helpful here. Thank you. The BIL uh, law, we improve funding and requirements for the installation of protective shields in buses to prevent assault on bus drivers. How has the provision been implemented, and have there been obstacles to improving safety measures in bus drivers for passengers? Uh, we hear they want more protection now. Uh, we're, we're very focused on making sure that we support both transit worker safety and rider safety. And in my discussions with operators and their representatives, there's uh, certainly an interest in the physical dimension of that. Uh, FDA's uh, published a proposed general directive on uh, actions to mitigate the risk of assaults on transit workers. Uh, we've also updated the National Public Transportation Safety Plan uh, to uh, enhance the guidance on how to make sure that uh, systems are, uh, are uh, performing adequately and that we have some visibility on that. Uh, we finalized a rule uh, known as the PTAS, the Public, Safety, uh, Public Transportation Agency Safety Plans regulation that has uh, a number of requirements, including performance targets, uh, the advancement of systems, uh, as you mentioned, that can help protect riders and workers, uh, as well as things like de-escalation training, uh, but with a real focus on making sure that we uh, protect workers and riders, and we welcome further opportunities to do so, uh, partnering with this committee. Great, because we had a, a hearing here in, in Washington years ago, and uh, many uh, drivers indicated they were very uh, assaulted various ways, and they, they want more protection. Well, we, is, we passed some, some uh, requirement, but is it enough? Has it been enough? Are they requiring more now? Uh, so I think it's safe to say that we have raised the bar with the new rule, uh, but part of what the rule is doing is, is laying out standards or tools for the transit agencies themselves to use. So we really need to maintain a partnership. We'll keep working to set not just a floor, but a set of best practices as we can at the federal level. Uh, but we really need to work agency by agency, knowing that the needs are going to be different, the conditions are going to be different, but the, the commitment is absolutely the same, uh, which is to make sure that uh, anyone uh, operating one of these transit vehicles knows that they are safe because they deserve uh, dignified as well as safe workplace. Uh, they, people count on them to get to where they're going. They ought to be able to count uh, on that basic level of safety. Thank you very much. Uh, DOT recently provided an update to Justice 40 initiative. The department has exceeded its goal of delivering 40% of the benefits of federal investments to disadvantaged communities. We applaud the, the agency for doing it, ensuring the funds from BIL to communities that have been historically neglected by the federal government. Can you elaborate in 20 seconds or more the implementation? How does the department plan to build on the successes of Justice 40? To us, Justice 40 is a way of keeping a promise that the president has made that communities that were overburdened and underserved, especially with regard to past rounds of transportation investment, 
uh, get their due. And that's what led to that 40% commitment that at least that many uh, of the investments going out to clean energy and transportation would go to such communities. Thank you, oh. sir. Are we out of time? I yield okay. back. Uh, we're happy to share more in writing. Uh, Mr. Perry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, I want to begin by giving credit where credit is due. I want to thank you for visiting South Central Pennsylvania.